If you're new to flying or maybe you haven't had an opportunity to go fly for a while, I'd invite you to come with me on this flight. I'm going to do a full flight from startup to shutdown. I'm going to fly over to a neighboring airport that's got an air traffic control tower. I'm going to do a couple touch and goes over there. I'm going to try to find my son. He's out there flying around somewhere soloing right now and join up with him in the pattern. He's supposed to meet me in the pattern over here at this neighboring airport. This is a little bit longer. It's actually a lot longer video than I've normally ever done, but I was hoping to capture for you an entire flight. So if you don't get to do this very often, or maybe you haven't ever done it at all, you'd see what it's like to go on an entire flight. If it helps you out a little bit, hit the like button for me and please send me some comments because I'd love to hear from you on this journey. Starting engine checklist, pre-flight inspections complete. Seatbelt shoulder harness is checked on the left. Circuit breakers are all in. They're checked, avionics and electrical equipment is off. Seat locks are secure. Well, now they're secure. Passenger briefing's complete. That's easy since I don't have a passenger. Four starting engine checklist complete. All right, starting engine checklist. Mixture's rich. Carburetor heat is cold. Prime if required. This is probably start just fine without the prime. Master switch on. And throttle open an eighth of an inch. Beacon light is on. Brakes test and set. Propeller area clear. Looks like I'm clear out there. Clear everywhere. Clear prop. Ignition switch start and throttle to a thousand RPMs. Always helps when you put the key in. All right, still clear. Here we go. I love a good starting airplane. All right, engines up, throttles at a thousand RPMs. Oil pressure's in the green. Flaps are up. Fuel selectors on hold. I'm gonna lean my mixture out just a little bit. Get my avionics master switch on. Now let's go to headsets. All right. Get the database acknowledged, fuel on board, 22 gallons. That's right, exactly what I tested that we had, and it's what the gauges say. So the gauges match the 750, which matches the dipstick. So 22 gallons, that's plenty of fuel. All right, let's taxi. Clear left, clear right. Ooh, the sun is bright. Power back to a thousand. Check my phone. See if my son's texts me that he's leaving yet. He's waiting for a fuel truck over there. <laughs> Denton Airport's not very far. We'll be there in 10 minutes after we take off. Let the engine warm up a little bit. I got uh, four minutes on the engine running right now. I like to let it warm up a good five minutes before I do my engine run up. All right, so before takeoff checklist, doors and windows closed and locked on the left and the right, just the window to go. Flight controls, free and correct. Full up, full down, rudders full left, full right. Ailerons left and right. Flight controls are free and correct. Flight instruments, airspeed zero, attitude indicators level, airport elevation of 610 is set. Wings are level, ball centered on the turn coordinator. Looks like the magnetic heading is about 290. Recalibrate that, vertical speed is zero. There's flight instruments and the radios are set. I have my common traffic advisory there. Test it, sounds good, and I've got Denton Tower and Standby. I'll put the, uh, I'll go ahead and put Direct to Denton. 
Not that I need it. I think I know how to get there. But... And I'll go ahead and load the frequency, 1932. That's the uh, ASOS, the Automated Weather at Denton. 1932, I got that. And then I'm also putting a air-to-air -air frequency on number two radio so I can talk to my son. All right, so flight instruments and radios are set. Fuel selector valve is on both. Elevator trim is set for takeoff. Mixture, it'll go rich for the run-up. I'll do a mag check. Running the power up to 1700 real quick. Left mag, about 100, back to both. Right mag, about 100 RPM drop, back to both. Carburetor heat on, about a 50 RPM drop. Engine gauges are all in the green. Power back to idle. And sometimes what I like to do is pull the carburetor heat on, pull the engine to idle. Just make sure it's the idle set and it still runs. In case I pulled off the runway after landing and pulled it to idle, I want to make sure they wouldn't die. Okay, so all that is done. Uh, mags have been checked, carburetor heat we checked, engine instruments we checked, radios are set. Departure briefing, I'm going to take off to the south here. I got about 2,700 feet of available runway. If I have any problems uh, before rotation speed, I'm just going to abort the takeoff, pull the power to idle, and uh, get on the brakes and stop. If I have any problems after takeoff, um, I've got a couple choice fields, not a lot, uh, to my left and to the right. I'll uh, just pitch for best glide speed of 65 knots and go for the best field I can. I'll make a left turn out on crosswind, climb up, and once I get on downwind and got enough altitude, then making it back to the runway would be a better option. All right, so departure briefing's complete. Seat locks confirmed locked. Transponder is set. Before takeoff checklist complete. Normal takeoff. I'm gonna do a uh, flaps 10 takeoff. I got a nice headwind. I wanna see how quick I can get off the ground. Carburetor heat will be cold, I go full power. I'll rotate at 55 knots and I'll climb out at 76. Normal takeoff checklist is complete. All right. Quick run through everything. Looks good. Prop watch traffic system 150 uniform, Charlie entering down one for 17, touch go. All right. I don't see anybody, haven't heard anybody coming in. I think we're good. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my landing light, taxi light, beacon, I mean my strobe, before I pull it out on the runway. Mixture's rich. Ready to go. I'll make a call, test my volume first. Hit Valley traffic, Cessna 401 Delta Tango, back taxi in 17, hit Valley. Okay, looks clear on final. A little windy. Winds are uh, last reported 160 at 16 gusting to 20, so they're relatively down the runway, but might be a tad bit bumpy. All right, time to turn off the air conditioner, otherwise known as shutting the window. Okay, last quick flow. Fuels on both. Flaps are set and verified outside. Mixture's rich. Carburetor heat is cold. Mags are on both. Runway looks clear. Hidden Valley traffic. Cessna 401 Delta Tango departing 17. Hidden Valley. All right, let's do this. Heels are on the ground. There's full power, 2300 RPMs at least. Airspeed's alive. Rock Watch traffic, Skyhook headed 464, 2607 miles to the uh, southwest that we possibly over hit the field at 2600. All right, uh, coming out pretty good with that headwind. Bringing my flaps up. And it is a little bumpy. And 
Prop Boss traffic, Cessna, uh, zero uniform, Charlie, we're going to back taxi to runway 17. All right, turning my crosswind. Looking for traffic. Engine gauges are looking good. Oil pressure, oil temperature. Well, she climbed out pretty good into the headwind, though. That was nice. For a 172. on a left downwind here. I chose to, to park kind of the actually the opposite direction of where I'm going, but I like being on a downwind over here, gaining a little bit of altitude before I head out across the, uh, the neighboring town. I like to get as much altitude as I can before I cross over the more populated area. Awesome, appreciate it. Uh, Prop boss traffic, Cessna Zero Uniform, Charlie, departing 17, going to be departing to the east. Prop boss. I'm going to climb up to 2,500. It's about 1,000 feet above the pattern altitude of where I'm going, but it'll give me a better glide distance over the town of Denton, the city of Denton, if I needed it. All right. I'll go ahead and listen to the ASOS on my number two comm. Wind one five zero at one two. Visibility one zero. Sky condition clear. Temperature three one Celsius. Dew point two zero Celsius. Altimeter three zero zero zero. Remarks. Density altitude two thousand five hundred. Denton Enterprise Airport. Automated weather observation. Two three five three Zulu, wind one five zero at one two. All right, one five zero one, one two. two. So the wind's down a little bit. <laughs> Didn't feel like it on takeoff, but they say they are. He's probably calling up in the middle of all that uh, traffic, but uh, Tom's trying. All right, well this is kind of hard to see. Uh, he's a student solo. And Carson, if you're on the radio, uh, try to call again. Sid Tower, this is six seven seven nine or six. This is six seven seven nine six tower. Uh, yeah, 67796, we're about 67796 Denton Tower. Uh, and we're requesting a full stop. Cessna 67796 Denton Tower, how do you hear? Well, I'm going to uh, do a 360. You just couldn't hear us, because I'm right up on the edge of the airspace. And it sounds like the uh, frequency is a little congested, so I can't go into the Class D airspace at the Towered Airport until I've made contact with them. So I'll do 1360 right here, and that'll buy me a little time. Sounds like they're having a hard time communicating with somebody, a student pilot, it sounded like. Then a Dallas Sky, okay, 3 flight, Mike, 8 miles to the north, inbound for full stop with the numbers. That's not 4 Mike, then Tower, 4 to 5 mile final, 1 8 left. 4 5 mile final for 1 8 left, 4 8 Mike. Dent Tower, Cessna 401 Delta Tango. November 401 Delta Tango Tower. 1 Delta Tango, Cessna 172, six, uh, 7 miles to your east, 2,500 inbound for full stop landing with the numbers. Tower, Cessna 25995 going around. Cessna 995 going around, continue right traffic for 18 left. Continue right traffic for 18 left, 25995. Uh, 401 Delta Tango, continue a left base for runway 18 left, safe type aircraft. Left base, 18 left, we're a Cessna 172, 1 Delta Tango. Alright, well, that's how it is sometimes going to the tower. They can be super busy, but then all of a sudden there's nothing going on. And it just so happened that right when I checked on, I heard they were having a hard, hard time getting a hold of a pilot, and then the instructor came on another airplane and said that's a student pilot, so I don't know what was going on, but sometimes you just need to buy a little time, and sometimes the best way to buy time is just to do a 360. departure to the east. 
I got the airport in sight, it's uh, about five and a half miles straight ahead. You know, it's kind of hard to see in the sun. Six, it says uh, 68332, we'll cross runway 18 left at Alpha 6 and we'll contact ground on the other side. Cessna 94 Victor, left turn Alpha 5, contact ground. Left at Alpha 5, contact ground, 94 Victor. Thank you. Cessna 995, runway 18 right, clear to land. Clear right, clear to land, 259 and to Taurus, Scott, 6 Alpha Golf, uh, are you going to call our turn or do you want us to just set up in a left downwind for 1-8 uh, left? 6 Alpha Golf, go ahead and set up for okay. a left downwind for 1-8 left. My son's trying to coordinate so we'll with me to meet me there. He's uh, in his airplane. That's now 1 uh, Delta Tango, continue your number 2 falling traffic on a 1-mile uh, funnel, runway 1-8 left shortened, clear to land. Clear to land, 1-8 left shortened, uh, number 2, uh, just 1 Delta Tango. Standard Dog, Scott, gate 2 flight, my 5-mile funnel for 1-8 left. Wait, Mike, you're going to be number All right. three following well, I'm going to have to start coming down into the traffic pattern now. Number so, three, I got a thousand feet to lose. Down, like Mike. Got the carburetor heat on. Power's coming back. He said I'm number two. Cessna six south of Gulf. You'll be number three following a Cessna. I think that's the guy. All right, number three, we're right looking there. for that traffic for six south of Gulf. You notice he said uh, the runway is shortened. They're doing some construction on the runway, so they have a pretty sizable portion actually blocked off. Well, that's annoying. Someone's got a stuck line. Point, Mike, that traffic follows uh, left base over Highway that's 3. That's static. You got a traffic inside play, Mike. Point, Mike, number two now. Runway 18 left shortened, clear to land. Number two, uh, one eight. All right, left looking for my traffic. Play, Mike. Wow. Six Alpha Golf is continuing downwind, I'll call out the traffic call. Alright, continue downwind, you'll call the traffic for Six Alpha Golf. I don't see the guy I'm following, I think he's on the ground already. Yeah. I do see the guy following me though, so I'm going to try to keep my speed up. Uh, 976, left turn at Alpha 4, then contact ground. Left out for four contact ground, uh, 976. Cessna 6 Alpha Golf, the traffic you're following is a Cessna at your 11 o'clock, one mile, just north of the boundary. Still got him in sight. Keeping my speed up. A little bit faster than normal. Confirm, you got that traffic. Normal. Confirm, uh, traffic. Because I know I got a guy pretty close behind me. 6 Alpha Golf, number 3, runway 18 left, shortened, clear to land. Verify, clear to land, 18 left, 6 Alpha Golf. And verify, 1 Delta Tango, clear to land, 18 left. 1 Delta Tango, from clear to land, 18 left, shortened. Clear to land, 18 left, short. 1 Delta Tango. I think he told me that already, but just making sure. Alright, so there's a really large displaced threshold. Power's off, coming in with some flaps. It was definitely a little more unusual approach. I kept my speed up as long as I possibly could. Carrying a lot of extra speed here right now. Just bleed it off, bleed it off. One Delta Dango, if able, left turn at Alpha 4. Alpha 4, one Delta Dango. And one Delta Dango, contact ground, 2395, thank you. 2395, one Delta Dango. Okay, well, it's kind of fast and furious, but I wanted to hurry up and keep my spacing from the guy that was behind me. So I kept my speed up a lot on final. And then slowed it down really quick to land. Okay, I just cleared the runway, let me bring up ground control. Hey, ground, uh, Cessna 401 Delta Tango, clear at Alpha 4, like to taxi back for takeoff. Well. Hey, ground, Cessna 401 Delta Tango. 
One zero one Delta Tango Denton Ground. Cleared Alpha Four. Like to taxi back uh, for a takeoff. November one zero one Delta Tango Runway one eight left Alpha Three departure. Taxi via Alpha. Alpha for Alpha Three Four Zero One Delta Tango. Just call me by my wrong yeah, number. Yeah, Suspect two zero one zero two at Fox Trot ready taxi to the active. That's my son, David. He's back there behind us. And did somebody call ground unanswered? Yep, two zero one zero two at Fox Trot ready. Suspect two zero one zero two turn right on Bravo, hold short at Alpha Three. Right on Bravo, Alpha Three. One zero two. Yes, Tug is a the taxiing out of the Hertz ramp. Just give way to him. <laughs> All right. Cessna two zero one zero two. But Cessna head to your left on the parallel there. Takes taxiing out. You'll be following them. Just hold short at Alpha. Follow them out to one eight left and call the tower when you're ready. You'll be number three for departure. Cool. Okay, we'll hold short at Alpha uh, for the Cessna on our left, and uh, we'll call tower number three. Yeah, the blue and white Cessna texting up off your left, a little behind you, maybe. In sight for 102. Mm -hmm. November 101 Delta Tango, continue taxing. You'll be number two for departure. That Cessna off your right and ahead of you is going to follow you. One Delta Tango. Delta Tango, call the tower. Will do, one Delta Tango. Standing ground, Skyhawk, 8348, Mike, Alpha 5. All right, well, there's Dave. Six Alpha Golf, left turn Alpha 4, contact ground. Left Alpha 4 and over to ground, thanks for your help, Six Alpha Golf. Thank you, appreciate it. Cessna 995, cross runway 18 left at Alpha 6. Uh, 18 left at Alpha 6. Uh, Pretty cool, I don't think to fly around the pattern with my contact son contact ground. in okay. another airplane very often. Awesome. Contact ground then, uh, 995. All right, well, I'm going to take off flaps up, flaps at zero, so a mixture will go to Rich right before I pull out on the runway. Fuel is still on both, flaps are at zero, carburetor heat is cold. I got my lights back off for sitting here on the taxiway. Take a picture of Dave over there. All right, I'll hold short right here. I'll give him a call here in just a second. Once that airplane takes off, looks like David's ready behind me. Uh, I'll give Tower a call. Denton Tower, Cessna 401, Delta Tango, holding short at Alpha 3. We'd like to remain in the pattern for a couple touch and goes if possible. Cessna 401 Delta Tango Den Tower, make right close traffic, change to 18 right, runway 18 left shortened, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff on 18 left shortened, and we'll make right traffic for 18 right, 1 Delta Tango. Okay, clear on final. Lights are on, mixtures rich. Nobody out there. Should hear David come on the radio here right behind me, saying he's ready for takeoff. All right, one last check. Everything looks like it's in the right place. Trim reset. Denton Tower, Cessna 20102, Alpha 3. Um, hold short, ready for takeoff. I would like to stay in the pattern. Cessna 20102, Denton Tower, make right close traffic. Change to 18 right, runway 18 left. Clear, 18 left shortened, clear for takeoff. 18 left, cleared uh, for shortened, clear for takeoff and right traffic. 102. All right, power looks good, airspeed. We're approaching VY, 76 knots, trying to stay right over the runway. Got a little slight crosswind, not too much. It is a little bumpy down low, that's for sure. I gotta stay right over the runway here, or David will tell me that I tracked off of it. We try to stay right over the top of the runway when we're climbing out, especially when we got an airport with parallel runways, one right next to the other, so you don't drift over. Um, over taxiways or over the top of another runway. Traffic, five o'clock, one mile, 500 feet. Below. All right, looks like clear to the right. I'm at 1,200 feet. I'm gonna make my right crosswind.
1,500 feet as to pattern altitude. I'm already there. Just the one Delta Tango, runway 18 right, clear touch and go. Clear touch and go, 18 right, one Delta Tango. There's 1,500 feet. Power's coming back. Turning right. On my downwind. So it's pretty cool having my son up here in the air with me. I actually uh, got the privilege of teaching him to fly. So we did we did his private pilot together in this airplane actually. And he was in the army. Spent uh, seven plus years in the army. His infantry, army ranger. He's out now doing a little, continuing his training. Just got his instrument rating and using the GI Bill to get his uh, commercial and multi in the neighboring part 141 flight school. So it's pretty cool for me to have him flying behind me. Um, this is the 9 Papa Tower. 9 Sierra Papa. Yeah, how do you hear this transmission? It's coming in clear, 9 Sierra Papa. 9 Sierra Papa, copy all, thanks. Uh, Frequency change approved, see you later. So Frequency change approved, have a good one, 9 Sierra Papa. Just the 102, number two to follow Cessna ahead of you, right base turn, runway 18 right, clear touch and go. Traffic in sight, 18 right, clear touch and go, 102. So David likes competitions. He always wants to have a competition with me. So, we're not in the airplane together. I'm gonna make my patterns kind of tight if I can and see if I can catch him in the pattern. Because I know what he's trying to do. He's trying to catch me right now. All right, so uh, I'm on this parallel runway here, just to the uh, west of the main runway I just landed on. It's uh, a 1-8 right, a little skinnier, not bad. All white over white. I'm a little high because I cut it kind of close. I go with full flaps on this one. Power is off, carburetor heat is on. Well, it's on now. <laughs> Lead off my speed, a little bit of right rudder for the crosswind. we go. Flaps coming up. Carburetor heat coming in. Make sure the flaps are up, and they are. Full power. A little bit of forward trim. A little right rudder tracking down the runway. There's rotate speed. All right. You know what? Even though it's hot and bumpy, this is still pretty awesome. <laughs> you know, flying a Cessna 172 never gets old. I first started flying these things like 30-some years ago, when I was 16, in high school. Actually, I soloed. My very first solo was from this airport right here. There wasn't a control tower here, and um, it was not a control tower. And my very first solo, my instructor got out of the airport airport, uh, got out of the airplane at the end of the runway and just surprised the heck out of me. She just got out and said, you're solo, and I, I begged her not to. I told her, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Ten Tower, Bonanza 636, Mike Romeo at 3,000, oh, no, 10 ready. miles to the north. And she just got out. For runway 18, full stop landing. Bonanza Went around the pattern. Mike Romeo, didn't tell her how to hear. Couple times. Loud, clear. It's pretty, pretty awesome. Mike Romeo. Bonanza 6, Mike Romeo, straight in, runway 18 left. I report a side mile funnel. Straight in, Romeo. All right, left, David just took off. 636, Mike Romeo. He's right on my wing. I'm on downwind. I'm going to make this one even tighter if I can, if they clear me. Second one, Delta Tango, runway 18 right, clear, touch and go. Clear, touch and go, 18 right, one Delta Tango. And there's going to be traffic inbound on the parallel. Roger, we'll be looking, one Delta Tango. Okay, I got the power at idle. I'm going to keep this in a little tighter. Kind of like a glide. I'm just going to set up a glide. Airplane glide's awesome. Cessna so 172, hard to beat. Look at this. Power is at idle. It's just coming down so gently. Put it in pretty tight. We'll go ahead and go with full flaps. Looking for that traffic that she was talking about. This is where it's really important not to overshoot the runway that you're going to when you have parallel runways. Because if you have somebody coming in, to the parallel runway and you overfly your runway, you're definitely getting in their space. It's not good to get in another airplane's space. You hear that, David? Don't get my space back there. 
He can't catch me. That's uh, 20102, traffic over the numbers, runway 18 right, clear, touch and go. All right, one right over two, white, touch, go. it's one, all zero, right. Two. 60 knots, power's off. Now, there we go. Bravo Charlie, runway 18 left, That's Alpha 3, departure taxi. What we want to do right there. Hold the nose gear off. Flaps are coming up. Carburetor heat is in. Verify my flaps are up. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Here comes the power. There's full power. Little trim in there. Little right rudder staying right on the center line. There's rotate speed. And there we go. Stay right over the runway so I don't drift. So, talk about why you hear me talk about looking out and watching the flaps come up. Yeah, it almost burned me one time. Only downside to electric flaps versus some of the older airplanes with manual flaps is you put the switch up, doesn't 100% necessarily mean the flaps came up. And one day I was doing some touch and goes and I brought the flaps up and I was really rushed. There was a lot going on on the radio. And I noticed when I started climbing up, the airplane wasn't climbing very good and it and it did kind of pop off the ground a little unexpectedly or uncharacteristically. Then Tower Bonanza 6. I just so happened to look behind me in my peripheral vision. I saw the flaps still hanging out at 20 degrees. The airplane's not designed to climb with the flaps at 20 degrees. The flap handle uh, something shorted out, and the flaps got stuck at 20 degrees. Looking for traffic. Fortunately, the airplane was light. I was still able to climb a little bit and uh, come back around to land. Bravo, Charlie, what have but you now I always flight? look out and verify that my flaps actually came up when I'm doing touch and goes. Charlie, departure to the east. Cessna 7 Bravo Charlie, runway 18 left, Alpha 3, turn left on course. Clear All right, David's traffic, just touching down. Runway. I gained Clear on him a little bit. Three left, turn on course. We've got the traffic set, uh, uh, 7 Bravo Charlie. Cessna 401 Delta Tango, runway 18 right, clear touch and go. Clear touch and go, 18 right, 1 Delta Tango. Dave's doing a pretty good job. He's hanging because he's about the same place he was last time around the pattern, which means he's flying some pretty short approaches too. We think a lot alike. He knows what I'm thinking right now. He knows I'm trying to catch him and he ain't gonna, he's not gonna let that happen. He's fiercely competitive in a good way. So yeah, I soloed out of this airport. What was it, 1988 roughly? A long time ago. There was no control tower here. My very first flight around, my instructor had a handheld radio in her hand, and she said, don't worry, I'll talk to you if there's a problem. My uh, very first time around, I had to do a go around. I was on short final, and a Piper Cub pulled out on the runway in front of me, just didn't see me. There was no control tower at this airport back in 1988, like there is now. I had to do a go around. And my instructor standing down along the side of the runway, watching. And she's thinking I was too scared to land. So it was kind of funny. We talked about that later. All right, here we go. Little red, little red over red, kind of low. I'm trying to hit it down on the numbers. There's no obstacles here. I'm gonna hold this off, kind of like I'm doing a soft field landing. I want to dissipate all the energy I can. I'm not letting it touch yet. Oh, okay, I let it touch a little sooner than I wanted to. It's still not bad. Ground speed of 32 knots. Nose gear still hasn't hit the ground. All right, flaps are coming up. Verifying that they're up. There we go. All right, well, that's pretty cool. Well, it was fun flying around the pattern with David with me, behind me there. Just kind of watching him in the pattern is pretty cool, watching him on the uh, on the screen. He's right there behind me. But I think I better head back. So I'm gonna head back to Hidden Valley now, where the runway's a lot skinnier, and the wind tends to definitely whip through the trees. It's a little more challenging there. I'm gonna tell Tower that I'd like to go ahead and depart to the uh, east. And Tower 1 Delta Tango, request to depart to the pattern to the east. Number 4 Delta 1 Delta Tango, left on course. 1 Delta Tango. All right, I got enough altitude to make my turn. Delta 
Engines assist Mike Romeo, where do you park? Uh, U.S. Jet. Left to enable Bravo to parking, remain on this frequency. Left out for Dave. Bravo to parking. Stay with you, 636 Mike Romeo, thanks for your help. I don't know if he's on this frequency or not. We agreed to monitor the air-to-air uh, -air frequency on our number two radio, so we can talk. He's just now touching down. All right. You just missed it. See you later, Dave. See you, man. That was fun. It sure was. Thanks for coming out. All right. Talk to you later tonight. Sounds good. <laughs> That's pretty awesome, huh? Got to teach him how to fly. Now he's out here on his own, flying around, doing his own thing, building his flight time. Going to be a professional pilot somewhere, somehow. He's pretty determined, smart, smart kid. He's not a kid anymore, but to me he is, and he's my kid. <laughs> All right, well, let's see. I'm climb up here, 2,500 feet. Uh, go back direct to my airport. It's only six miles ahead. Should be there in four minutes. But tune in my frequency for Hidden Valley Air Park in standby. Still climbing. I don't have to climb this high, but I prefer to climb as high as I can whenever I'm going over a congested area. There's just not a lot down here. Um, at least not a lot, a lot of great landing places, so as much altitude as I can get will give me the best landing I can get. Uh, best uh, glide ratio. Speaking of glide ratio, pretty cool because my um, pretty cool because my uh, four flight on my iPad's got a glide ratio ring around it. Let's see if I can I should have started recording that. Record my screen so I can show you. Got a pretty good glide ratio. So you see this uh, kind of greenish circle? I'm up here 2,500 feet and it says I can glide pretty far now. I got a lot more options. The higher I get, the bigger that circle gets. Um, I'm almost out of their airspace. Once I pass that little dashed line, a dash dark blue line. I'm outside of the class Delta, the class D Delta airspace. And um, I'm out of Denton Towers airspace. I can switch over to the common traffic advisory frequency at Hidden Valley. So I'm gonna do that now. And I'm gonna make a radio call because I'm not that far away. Hidden Valley traffic, Cessna 401 Delta Tango's three and a half miles to the west inbound for landing at Hidden Valley. Make an early call as early as you can, three and a half miles is not that early, but when you're coming right out of uh, a tower controlled airspace, you don't really, it's not real feasible to make an early call. I guess I could have, I have two radios, but where I uh, live and fly out of is not that busy of an airport, so probably be fine. So you can see according to this ring here, based off the current winds, I could almost glide to the runway from where I'm at at 2,500 feet. It says right now it almost make it. I could at least walk home. <laughs> Hope I can walk home. All right, I'm going to cross over midfield, enter a left downwind to land on runway 17. So since I'm crossing over midfield, I prefer to be at or above traffic oh, pattern altitude. Traffic, I'm on the lookout for anybody uh, on my um, final for moving map seven. display. Northwest and region. I haven't heard anybody, so I'm going to go ahead and descend to pattern altitude. You could stay at pattern altitude too, but I don't like descending down onto downwind because I can't really see underneath me very well. Uh, so I kind of prefer to almost be at pattern altitude, maybe just slightly above it as I cross over midfield, if I'm going to turn and enter a, a downwind. If this was a busier airport, I probably would maybe not do this. I probably would fly out and come in on the other side of the airport and just enter a 45 degree angle onto a downwind. But this is not a very busy airport, so I should be fine. Got the airport in sight, descending to pattern altitude, and making a radio call. Hidden Valley traffic, 
One Delta Tango crossing over midfield for left downwind, one seven, hidden valley. I'll listen to the winds, one more zero. Sky condition, clear. Temperature, two niner Celsius. Dew point, two zero Celsius. Altimeter, three zero zero zero. Remarks, density altitude, two thousand three hundred. Denton Enterprise Airport. Automated weather observation, zero, zero, five, three, Zulu. Wind, one, five, zero, at one, three. All right, so the wind really hasn't updated. And I just saw the wind sock, that looks about right. The way this airport is set up, the wind gets really squirrely coming in here because there's a, it's kind of a Venturi effect. The way the, if the wind's kind of strong out of the south, it kind of funnels in between the way these trees are set up on the sides of the runway. And it's, uh, it could get a little sporty landing here sometimes. Only to the south. Landing the other direction, it's a piece of cake. All right, at pattern altitude, on a left downwind, making my call, looking for traffic. Hit Valley traffic, uh, 401, 401 Delta Tango, left downwind. 17, full stop, hit Valley. My Dale traffic, must tier 922. All right, I think I better lose the shades. South, east, inbound for 18, Medill. All right, I'm gonna go ahead with my carburetor heat, my flaps at 10. Keeping the airport in sight off at about a 45 degree angle. Turn in my base. Beautiful sunset. That's what I love about flying. Man, the evenings, sunsets are just amazing. When you're up here and you're flying, you honestly don't think about anything else. I can completely admit to you I have not a thought about anything else in the world in my life has went through my head since I've been up here flying. That's what I love about it. You just uh, kind of get away from everything and just enjoy being up here where it's really peaceful. But don't get me wrong, I don't have anything to get away from. I got a pretty awesome family, great wife, and awesome kids. I'm not running away from him in the airplane. <laughs> I'm just getting up here to relax and watch that beautiful sunset. All right, but I gotta pay attention here because Hidden Valley's a little more challenging landing to the south when it's windy like this. All right, rolling final, a little high, but that's okay. Come in with my 20 degrees of flaps. You can see the way the runway is kind of carved out in the trees. It gets just real turbulent because the train drops off at the end of this runway. So the air just kind of comes burbling over the top end of the runway, it creates a downdraft right here. I almost always get a sinker. There it is, there's a little sinker pushing me down. I just compensate with a little extra power. Got plenty of speed though. I got the runway made, so the power's off. Adele traffic, no, that's here in five, nine, two tango is uh... Five miles, kind of in the little Venturi here. It'll settle out when I come out of it right here. Right. It's kind of weird. Felt like a brake drug or something. Maybe not. Maybe that was me. <laughs> Just gusty. Little little gust. Not bad. All right. I could have easily stopped a lot sooner, but no reason to get on my brakes, so... Open the air conditioners, put the air conditioning on high. That's high, by the way. That's medium. All right, I think I'll just turn around right here, make a call that I'm back taxiing. Hidden Valley, one Delta Tango, back taxi, one seven, Hidden Valley. Northwest Regional Traffic, running six seven uniform, starting left, downwind for runway one seven, Northwest Regional. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for coming with me. I know it's nothing special, but you got to hear a little bit of uh, talking on the radio and going from a non-towered airport to a towered airport. And um, I to hear a little bit about my son. It's a neighbor that drove by on a golf cart. <laughs> so that was pretty cool flying with Dave in this pattern. I've only done that a couple times. I've been in the Stearman and he's been in this airplane. And when he got his private pilot certificate after his check ride, that he took in this airplane, I flew over in the Stearman and we flew in formation home. So we got to do that one time. 
and another time we flew the Stearman and the 172 at the same time. So, pretty cool. All right, well, I'm going to clean it up right here. I'm clear the runway, do a quick flow, leave the fuel on both, bring my flaps up, lean my mixture out, carburetor heats off, turn all the unnecessary lights off right at sunset, so I really need my nav lights on, but I'm on the ground now, so nav lights and beacons all I got on. Yeah, clear left, clear, clear right. Back to your back. Runway 17, full stop, Northwest Regional. Here's Creek, 660, left downwind. So normally when you pull up, you don't come coasting up with the engine cut off, but where I live, it's kind of downhill into my ramp in my driveway, so when I approach it like this, I just cut the engine. That way, if for some reason I had a problem with the brakes or something weird, I don't have the prop turning or kids come running out, the dog, balls, all kinds of things can get in my way. So I just kind of come coasting in here, practice my engine failure procedure. Just kidding. And uh, that's it. Awesome. Well, I'm going to turn off the um, radio master switch, and that's going to kill the microphone. So I hope that you enjoyed that. If you have any questions about flying, anything you want to talk about, if there's any videos you'd like to see, maybe you're just considering flying, maybe you've already taken a flight or two, if there's things you'd like to learn more about, um, put those in the comments. And um, I'd love to help you out any way I can. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.